hey, everyone wanted to show off a cool new thing about voice flow. Um, so over here, I just have a simple carousel step. There's nothing else going on in this canvas. It's as if I just dragged out a carousel step and I filled out a few things. So got T1 with a nice image and T2. They each have a description and a button. And if I run my prototype, no surprises, it will show the familiar carousel and we can browse through it, press button. It doesn't go anywhere, so it ends. Okay, awesome. What I'm gonna do now is right click and press inspect. I'm gonna go over to the network tab and what I'm gonna do is write the words interact. Um, this is the endpoint that gets called when the prototype tool runs. You'll see here that for this 200 call in the response tab of this request. Um, so the request will be something about general runtime and interact. So over in the response section, we're gonna ignore the state we're gonna see that it gives back a trace. So over here, there's a particular trace. So it's a list of objects. So that you can see that there's a few things going on, but we see that there is a carousel trace and this is what corresponds to the carousel. So for both the prototype and the web chat as well, um, as long as it gets this kind of large object, it will show the corresponding carousel. So we can see here that we got T1, you know, um, the text, something about T1 over here, and we can see that we have the button and the image that corresponds to it. And as long as the prototype tool or the web chat gets this body, it will show the corresponding carousel. It doesn't really care if it truly came from a carousel step or not. So we're gonna exploit that and be able to um, show something really cool. So where it gets a little crazy is I'm gonna be able to pull in a custom action step now. So I am going to close that stuff. Um, and what I'm gonna do is collapse the payload and I'm gonna select across it. This will allow me to select everything. So this is all selected now and press copy. And the name of the custom action step roughly corresponds to the type of the trace. So we're gonna call this carousel. It has to match perfectly, carousel. And for payload, there in the action body, which now is a JSON format, um, the action body is always tied to the payload field here. I'm just gonna paste that in. Great, so now I'm gonna connect my start step to this custom action step. And I'm just gonna run this again. Um, we can close the spec tab here. Great, it just showed a carousel, but there's no carousel step here. It's just a custom action step. And just to make sure it's not a fluke, I could even delete this carousel step. Over in the custom action, instead of calling this T1, we'll call this T1 Redux. Um, yeah, and then run it again. So now we can see that it's doing T1 Redux. So it clearly is using stuff from the custom action step now instead of a carousel step. And we've essentially kind of built a virtual fake carousel step within this custom action step. So why would you need this? This just, just seems like a convoluted way of doing a carousel um, when you can just do it in a carousel step with nice inputs and things. Um, just by itself, the custom action is not that useful, but where it can get very interesting is when we mix in the JavaScript step. What we can do is kind of set up a carousel that um, does a little bit more. So over here in my NLU model, I've actually added a carousel dynamic variable. So make sure you add your variables and I'm gonna set it up in this JavaScript step. So we can see in the carousel, we're gonna try to mimic the body here it generally has a layout and cards. So I'm just gonna do layout. Um, I believe the value here was carousel and it has a array of cards. Okay, so carousel, cards, it needs a list of cards. And I'm gonna use one of the existing cards here. So remember from our T thing earlier, I can see that this is where the card ends. I'm just gonna grab it. And we're gonna, sorry, copy. I'm gonna create a card thing and I'm just gonna paste that in. And sorry about the indentation here, I can fix that up, not too hard. And there's actually quite a few things that you actually don't need in a card, we can make it a lot simpler. You don't need the ID here, we don't need the slate, we just care about the text. Um, so already it's a little easier to read. And yeah, uh, for the full typing of what a carousel needs to be, uh, we'll provide that in our documentation. But 
what I can do is carousel dynamic dot cards dot push card. And I'm just gonna follow it up here and right under this JavaScript step with just by putting carousel dynamic as a variable now. And let's try that. Hmm. Oh, right. I think, uh, and the last thing we need to do is stringify this because it only takes a string. So carousel dynamic equals JSON dot string it by uh, carousel dynamic. Now this should be good. There we go. So we kind of made a card, but what if we want 100 cards? So that's kind of what's fun. Uh, I'm not gonna do 100, but maybe um, let's do 10. So I'm gonna set the cards equal to the same card, but over and over and over and over again. So cool. So I've made uh, five cards. Now if I run it, have we got five cards? Great. Um, where this is also useful is you can call an API. So maybe your API fetches something like products. You're, you're, you have like a tea store and you sell 10 different types of tea or what's on promotion. Sometimes it's just two items, sometimes it's five items. The carousel's length will change depending on that. And you can kind of inject it here with the cards. Um, you can also customize things. So I wanna make this a function. Uh, I'm gonna call this make card. So what this means now is it will create a card um, based and we'll inject some parameters. So we'll call this name uh, and maybe your product has an SKU. So this is like the product ID or the product number. So we'll just make the name of it the title. And what's gonna be fun is in the payload of every single request, I'm gonna put um, SKU equals SKU, or you can actually just write this in JavaScript for short. And what I'm gonna do now is kind of use that factory, this make card thing. I'm gonna run make card uh, T1. <clears throat> we'll call this product ID T that, uh, <clears throat> T1. And I can just copy this. And maybe we want T25, and I'll call this the SKU T25. Um, finally, I'll do another one, let's call this T999. Um, so this is product 999, and these are the ones I happen to have on promotion or something. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna run this. <coughs> and yeah, so we can see I have T1, T25, T999. Um, pretty awesome. Uh, what's also useful now is the carousel step by itself will just keep going. Uh, sorry, the custom action step will just always head out to the next step. So if I write test here, right, that's just gonna write, show the carousel and then it's gonna say test after. But the custom action also has a little built-in thing called stop on action, which tells it to always stop whenever it comes across this um, carousel. So now if I have a text step afterwards, it is not going to immediately jump to the text. So nothing happens here until something happens. But you notice that if I press a button right now, it doesn't, it'll defer me to the test, but it doesn't really do anything too much, right? So over here in the JavaScript, so under this button, um, we'll call this button plus the name to make it a little bit better. And the request type now, I can do, I can call this path, uh, or T selected. And that corresponds to the name of the path. So I'll do T selected. And uh, what this will do is now if I press 
t selected, it will take me to test. Cool. It was working before because it was a default path, but um, you want to be explicit with your paths. What does this path do? So we could have 100 cards. Um, actually, why don't I just make a script to do this? Uh, for, what is this? How do I do a for loop again? I don't have an answer. Let i equals zero. Um, i is smaller than 10. We're going to do i plus plus. So this is just going over a loop 10 times. Um, and I'm just going to do tell the cards to add a card. And we're going to call this T I and T dash I. So this will have 10 cards now. Uh, we can just test that. Oops. Uh, dot cards, sorry. Dot push. We made a little mistake here. Code. Um, but this should throw out 10 cards. Okay, so we got T0 all the way till T9, which is 10 cards. Yeah, so we just dynamically generated a carousel there. And I care about what they've selected. So what I can do now is over in the JavaScript step, um, let's make a new variable actually. Let's call this uh, T selection create a variable. So I'm going to set T select, oops, T selection equal to last event. This is a built in variable that voice flow supports dot payload dot SKU. Oops, typed that wrong. Dot SKU. Um, if you remember in the JavaScript step here, for every single button that we have, so button plus name or whatever, it's always going to have a request type and a payload. So the request is always T selected. T selected maps to the path. They all map to the same path, but they all have different SKUs. So I'm pulling out the SKU based on what the user has selected. And I will say, great, looks like you selected uh, T selection. So now let's test this out. And I'm just going to go through and select maybe, let's say, T5. Great, it looks like you selected T5. So, why this flow is so powerful is that it allows you to kind of give the users a multitude of choices and then kind of collapse it back down and map it into a single variable. Um, in the past, what I've seen a lot of people do, and it certainly works if you know exactly how much you have, but often you'll have many cards and I see people with a button. And then right after that button, there is an action where you like set the variable. So maybe like here, it'd be like T selection set variable to T5 or something. And you have to repeat this to for every single <clears throat> card you have on the entire thing, for every single button, every single path. But this allows you to do the whole thing dynamically and generate these carousels. Um, there's going to be an even better way to do this in the future. I can't share too much yet, but I'm excited about that. Uh, but for now, this is definitely a way that works. And if you're wondering, this is only limited to a carousel. No, you can uh, mimic any type of trace that is outputted essentially anywhere by any card. So you can mimic a text, a card step, or an image step, and plenty of other things. So that's exciting. Uh, one other thing I haven't touched on that's also new to a custom action step is something called use global listen. So normally, um, as we saw before, if you have a text step right after a carousel step, it will just kind of do nothing. Uh, cool. Um, let's run this. So it'll just kind of say cool. All right, this one says stop on action. 
Okay, maybe a better way to demo this is uh, I'll put a capture step after new block two. Oh, okay. Usually, uh, I'm just gonna keep going next turn. So we're gonna simulate like a bit of a longer conversation here. We're gonna have another capture step and wait for the user to say something. Okay. Um, we're going to stop on the action here. And I'm just gonna make sure we're not using global listen yet, okay. So what happens right now is it is kind of like a carousel, but not quite. So let's select T1. And I can just say cool or something and I'll take me to the next turn. But now if I go select T1 again, it kind of does nothing. It just doesn't understand that because I'm way past that turn now. It's gone. That context window has passed. Um, it's no longer listening for when I go press this. So I can, I can keep pressing this, but it's just going to keep falling back because I'm currently on new block three here. And um, it's just waiting on stuff here. But if I go back and I turn on uh, use global listen, this means that this carousel step is now listening all the time. It doesn't matter if it's on the step or not. So let's run through that same demo again. Um, I'm just gonna write cool. Um, I didn't select the T there and I'm gonna write cool again. So now I'm on new block three again. <clears throat> but maybe the user goes back up and looks at T, T2 and it's like, oh no, maybe I want T2. So it press that. It will actually jump all the way back over and then select T2. Or I can go back up here again and I can go select T5, for example. And it'll say, oh, great, wait, you selected T5, that's fine. And I can always go down to another turn. I could be on some other part of the flow. But because we enable global listen, it means that it is always listening for the events that pop out from here. Which means that this carousel step is almost like it's listening on the global level, which is what a, sorry, this custom action step is listening on the global level, like the carousel step does. So that's the way you can mimic the full range of activities for um, a carousel step. Yeah, hopefully this video covers a lot and um, is helpful for identifying things. And of course, this is all available on the web chat too. Uh, simply put, I can head over here. I'm gonna turn on my web chat and just grab the script, copy. Uh, this is a website I like to use a lot, um, W3, just for Content, if I just plop my web chat on here on the side, you can see uh, it's cool. I got my dynamic carousel going on here. Um, the same thing that I saw in prototype tool is feasible on the web chat as well now. Uh -huh. And maybe that's like T5 and it's gonna say, you know, T5, uh, I can say cool. And you can always go up here and select something else different. Yeah, so that's kind of the whole walkthrough of the new custom action step and dynamic carousels. Hopefully this is useful. Thanks.